number 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.3, number 21. And here we were found, asked to find some x-intercepts. So I need to factor this trinomial. And I can see that we've got powers of x here. And the smallest power is that x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and factor that out. That's what you see me doing here. And I'm left with this trinomial of x to the fourth minus 2x squared minus 3. And if, if you ever struggle with factoring, you can always check yourself by redistributing and seeing if you got back to where you started. So what I mean by that is, well, x squared times x to the fourth, sure enough, that is x to the sixth. And x squared times negative 2x squared, well, that is negative 2x to the fourth. And x squared times minus 3 or negative 3 is negative 3x squared. So I can just check myself and make sure that my factoring is correct as I'm going through that. Now, I'm still left with a trinomial. I have a different trinomial now, but it's at least a smaller power or a lesser power, right? I had an x to the sixth, now I have an x to the fourth. Well, you can see that I've got this these terms here. I've got a minus two, and on the outside I have this, or the last term there, I have the minus three. So I can factor this, and if you're like, well, I'm not quite sure, Imagine if you had x squared minus 2x minus 3, right? You would tell me that was x minus 3, x plus 1. Well, if I have x to the 4th minus 2x squared minus 3, we can do a u sub like we did back at the end of chapter 2, or we can just say, well, this is going to be x squared minus 3 times x squared plus 1. And that's why I'm getting to this line here. Now, when we go to break this, this is a difference of squares. I mean, you're used to things like, if I just do a little side problem, we're probably more used to something like x squared minus 4 breaking into x minus 2, x plus 2. But anytime you have x squared minus a squared, right, a difference of squares, it's x minus a times x plus a. So I, I'm with you that this is not a perfect square. Minus 3 is not a perfect square, but I can break it into minus root 3, plus root 3, right? That's the square root of that number. That's that symbol there. So that's how I'm going to break up. Let me erase that one. That's how I'm going to break up this factor. It's going to become x minus root 3, x plus root 3. Now here we have a sum of squares, right? So we have x squared plus 1, or if you want to write it in general, it's x squared plus a squared, right? A sum of squares. And let me just write up here, right? This was a difference of squares. And whenever you have a sum of squares, let me put a little division line here. These are prime. You can't break these. There's no real answers. Um, you could get imaginary solutions, right? If you wanted to ultimately set this equal to zero, you would get x squared equaling negative one, and then you would get x equaling plus or minus the square root of i, which while those are zeros, they're not going to be x-intercepts because they're not real numbers. So if you're being asked to find an x-intercept and you get this sum of squares, you're like, okay, I'm done with that. That's, that's not going to help me anymore. So as we start to go through this, let me just erase all this so we have a little bit less stuff on my, on my um, screen. So once I've broken this, right, I'm at this level, I've got an x squared, I've got an x minus root 3, and an x plus root 3. And again, this right here, this one's prime. So I'm just kind of donezo there. So then I want to set each of my factors to zero. So I've got x equaling zero, x minus root three equaling zero, and x plus root three equaling zero. All right, and now technically I have multiplicities of um, two here, secret one here, and secret one here. All right, but in solving these, this is already solved for. This becomes x equaling root three. This becomes x equaling negative root 3. Oops, let me put the negative there. Well, that's a little hard to see. Negative root 3. And those are my three x-intercepts, or at least the x-coordinates of those x-intercepts. Keep in mind, x-intercepts, right, we're always going to write as ordered pairs. So they need an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. So that's why I'm writing 0, 0, root 3, 0, and negative root 3, 0. And those are my three x-intercepts. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.